ಶರಮಣೀಯ ದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸರುಚಿರಾಜ ಪೂಜಿತ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೈರ್ಮುದಾ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಗಣಶ್ಯಾಂ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀಹರಿಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಠಾಕೋರ್ಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಸದ್ಗುರು ದೇವನೀ ಜೈ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಮಾಟಿ ಅವರ್ ಬಿಲೌಡ್ ಠಾಕೂರ್ಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ಮೇ ಕಟೋಲ್ ಇಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಪಾತ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಡ್ಯೂಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ವಿ ನೋ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಅವರ್ ಸತ್ಸಂಗ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಟರ್ಮಿನಾಲಜೀಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ವಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯೂಡ್ ವಿ ಬಿಲೀವ್ ಅವರ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಸಂತೋಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಸದ್ಗುರುಸ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ದ ಮದರ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಶ್ರೀಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ರಿಕ್ಲೇರ್ ಮುಕ್ತಾನಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಅ ಮದರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸತ್ಸಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ವೇ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಮುಕ್ತಾನಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಬಟ್ ದೆನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಅದರ್ ಸದ್ಗುರುಸ್ ದೇ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ನಾನ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ದ ಮದರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಜೀವ್ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ವಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಪಾತ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಅ ಮದರ್ ಹೂ ಕೇರ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಹರ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ವೇ ದಿಸ್ ಸದ್ಗುರುಸ್ they are taking care of our our self on the satsang meaning just as a mother care for baby's food water and everything clothes and everything in the same way these sadgurus they are protecting us they are training us they are taking care of our for our satsang food meaning how we can become strong and strong in the satsang how we achieved more and more mahima in the satsang how we imbibe more and more virtues in our satsang life in this in this way sadgurus are the mother of the soul in this satsang and that's why just as a mother who teach or who train her children like when you encounter this kind of miseries then you should do this when you have this problem then do this in the same way sadgurus they are teaching us like when you encounter something like this in the satsang you should do this if you have this problem you should do this in the same way gunatanand swami he give us some ideas and some training so that we can train our own self to remain safe and very smoothly we can live in the satsang not only that but progress day by day to experience more and more the divine bliss of sri ji maharaj so let me read first the gunadhanan swami nivat swami narayan hare swami narayan hare gunadhanan swami says when one encounters worries relating to anything place them on god's shoulders we are not strong while he is strong and knows how to protect just as he protected prahlad he protects us in countless ways this is what gunadhan swami nivad this is only two two sentence but two three sentence gives more uh we can say like more uh strength on the walk on the path of god because there is no one's life not only in satsang but even in this world there is no one's life is such that uh is without any kind of worries or problems or difficulties everyone has to face the difficulties and worries because the life is a summation of happiness and miseries so happiness as well as miseries happen to everyone's life and in the same way our life also remain full with the happiness as well as with the worries there is not a single day pass without any problem or difficulties or any happiness everyone can have this both things in a life but whenever we have happiness we do not think for anything 
meaning we do not have any kind of worries. We just enjoy that moment. We just enjoy those things or those objects or the company of the people, everything. But whenever we have any kind of problems, difficulties, worries, then we become upset. We do not find the way how to come out of the worries or problems. But Gunajan and Swami here give us the eternal knowledge regarding the eternal technique to come out of the problems and worries. And for that Gunadan Swami says when one encounters words relating to anything, Gunadan Swami not says like uh, not focus on particular way or particular point of worries. But Gunadan Swami says worries relating to anything. Meaning whether you face worldly worries or relating to the satsang or whatever, doesn't matter. But at that time, place them on God's shoulders. This is the important point. What happened? We every time become tired. We lost our patience. We even become very tired and we do not feel to do anything. Why? Because at the time of difficulties or any problem or worries, we are thinking in such a way that I have to do, I have to solve this problem, I have to solve this one, uh, I have to do this, I have to do, do this, this much work. In this way, we are facing, we are thinking only for our own self, meaning we can do something. Not like that. But don't worry. Whenever worries encounter, do not disturb. Instead of disturbing your mind, just place everything on the soldier of God. Meaning, put everything on God. He is the all doer. He has thousands, 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 meaning millions of ways to protect us from difficulties. Because He is the all doer. He is the inspirer of all. He is the creator, he is the sustainer, and even he is the destroyer. So do not try yourself. This is what Gunadhan Swami says. We are nothing. We cannot do anything by our own self. We just pray to Bhagwan. We just pray to our Sadguru. We just pray to other Santos and Bhaktos. Not doubt. Not every time we should remain without doing any effort, but we should do the effort only to please Bhagwan and our Sadguru. We should do effort to follow their commands. We should follow, uh, we should always try to imbibe their virtues. But whenever we have any miseries or worries or difficulties in our life, then don't try that much like because of that because of your try uh, because of your uh, because of your effort you become very tired and lost the patience lost the courage do not do that things instead of that if we can put everything on bhagwan and pray to him maharaj guruji I have this difficulty in my life. Please protect me from these difficulties. Please show me any ways so that I can come out of this problem. In this way, Gunadhan and Swami teach us not to become worried for anything and always be firm in one of the main principles of fundamental principle of the satsang, like Bhagwan is the all-doer. Moreover, Gunadhan Swami says, we are not strong. What we can do? Even we cannot digest our food, our own self. We cannot even maintain our body. To maintaining our body, we have to go to the gym every day. Moreover, we have to digest our food, some have to take some pills. 
what we can do we cannot do anything but bhagwan is the all powerful he is the inspirer of he is the creator sustainer and destroyer of all everything not only this one cosmos or this entire world but he is the controller of millions and millions of brahmands millions and millions of universes so we have that bhagwan we have attained that bhagwan in the form of murti as well as in the form of sadguru so if we place all our worries on them then we remain worry free we remain very peaceful in our life not only that but with this peace we can worship bhagwan more and more we can remember bhagwan more and more and whenever we have worries in our mind due to the tension due to some stress we cannot even worship bhagwan properly we cannot read the scripture we cannot do our daily satsang routine if we do then we cannot have our mind on bhagwan so physically we can perform all the rituals and everything but not our not through the mind so just as here in gunatan and swami says like we are not strong while bhagwan is strong and knows how to protect us because he has millions ways to fetch out our, to our own self from all kind of difficulties and miseries how we can know about this how we believe like gunadan sai says bhagwan is all doer and bhagwan has thousands of the ways to protect us but how we believe for that gunadan sai says just as he protected prahlad he protect us in countless ways why gunadan sai give here the example of prahlad ji we all know about the bhakt prahlad but still as it is mentioned here in gunatan and swami vad let we see who was prahlad and how bhagwan protected him in very short we can say once upon a time there was an evil king named hiranyakashipu which means dressed in gold who demanded that everyone should worship him as a god he thought of himself as the lord of the universe but his son prahlad would only worship the great god vishnu the father who was a king he instructed everyone like he is the bhagwan he is the only god he is the controller of universe and that's why everyone should worship him as a god on the other hand his own son prahlad he was not worshiping him as god instead of that he was worshiping bhagwan vishnu as the god then the king tried to force his son to bow down to him but prahlad refused the king ordered his army to kill his son but prahlad called upon lord vishnu in turn the soldiers lost their strength then the king had him thrown into a pit of poisonous snakes but again prahlad call on vishnu and of poisonous snakes but again prahlad call on vishnu and survived so in this way his father he had tried many different ways to kill prahlad but every time prahlad has, prahlad was not more than 15 years old he was merely a child and even though he was very little in age but he he was very advanced in spirituality in uh, reciting bhagwan's holy name in repeating bhagwan's holy name and that's why every time whenever prahlad has difficulties like this he was like just imagine in your mind you were only 15 years old and you were thrown into a pit of like 
thousands of poisonous snakes, what would you think? You definitely give your own result. And you bow down to someone who had thrown to uh, throw you into the pits of such poisonous snakes. But instead of fearing for anything, without any kind of fear on his face, he just chant Bhagwan's holy name. That's it. He was standing amidst the thousands of poisonous snakes. Still, he didn't have any problems or difficulties or fear in his mind. And that's why Bhagwan protected him. Not only that, but in this way, uh, Prahlad's father was, he was very like powerful king and that's why he had tried many ways to kill his own son only because he was worshipping Bhagwan and not worshipping him as a god. So finally, the evil king called on his sister Holika to carry Prahlad into the flames of a bonfire. She had been promised that she had a gift from the gods that would save her from being burned. The ill Holika burst into laughter as the flames began to rise because she was thinking like she had a boon received from demigods. So she definitely not burned because of the fire. But what happened? But again, Prahlad was chanting Vishnu, Vishnu, Vishnu and the power of Vishnu was so great that Prahlad was protected while Holika was burned to that. So instead of Prahlad, Holika, his sister, burned to ashes, not Prahlad. So in this way, Bhagwan even protected him in that situation. Not only that, this is not the last sin, but because of this, Hiranyakashipu, the father, he became very angry on Prahlad. And he asked Prahlad, who saved you? Then Prahlad said, God saved me. And then the king, he, his temper lost, meaning he became extremely angry on Prahlad. And he drew his sword. Where is your God? Where is your Vishnu? Then Prahlad said, God is everywhere. He is in the fire. He is in the water. He is in the wind. He is in the grass. He is even in this wall. He is even in each and every particle of this earth. He is everywhere. Even he is on this pillar. Then, the father, he asked again, Are you sure your Bhagwan, your Vishnu, is still here in this pillar, in this stone pillar? pillar? Then the Prahlad said, Yes, he is there on the pillar. Then immediately at the same time, Bhagwan Nurusi came out of, by breaking the pillar. He came out there, out of the pillar, and he finally killed the evil king Hiranyakashipu and protected Prahlad. So Gunajitana Swami says here, just as Bhagwan had protected Prahlad in the same way, he protect us in countless ways, meaning Bhagwan appear from the pillar. There is no scope of anything, but Bhagwan appear there from the pillar in the same way whether we think whether we believe it or not but whenever we have difficulties and if we put those difficulties on the shoulder of Bhagavad and we become his disciple his devotee and without fearing for anything if we abide by his injections his commands then he will definitely protect us from any kind of miseries or worries. Now let me see again, there is, there were thousands and thousands of examples in our satsang as well. 
just as Bhagwan had protected Prahlad in the same way, Bhagwan has protected many many saints and many many devotees in the satsang. We know about our Adi Guru Sadguru Muktan and Swami. He was protected many times from dangers, from difficulties. Sometimes he was given a poison and still he remained alive without uh, without having any harm to him. Why? Because Bhagwan every time protected him. Because just as Prahlad remained without any kind of fear, in the same way, Muktanan Swami was also remained fearless in all kind of situations. But once upon a time, when Muktanan Swami was traveling, to different villages to preaching satsang fundamentals as prescribed by Sri Maharaj. So while traveling, Swami had to pass through a dark jungle. Why I am telling this story of Muktanan Swami to you? Because in this story, Muktanan Swami had crossed the border, meaning he not only remained fearless in a tough situation, but even he became very joyful. He got like he had no scope to escape or he had no scope to remain or live for more hours. At the time he remained, he became joyful. He enjoyed that moment. Why? Because he has everything on Bhagwan. He had not keep anything for his own self. He has everything surrendered, his everything surrendered to Bhagwan. And that is why he had firm faith in Bhagwan. Like he definitely protect me from these difficulties as well. So finally, what happened to his traveling? Swami had to pass through a dark jungle without any fear and with the remembrance of Swami and Bhagwan. He proceeded in the dense forest. At the end of the woods, there was a wide river. When Swami reached the bank of the river. It was already evening and there was no possibility to cross it because there is no facility, there is no any boat or something, nothing there. And as that was the time of sunset, so there is not much light or nothing. If he's, what, what was the situation for Muktanan Swami? If he stayed there for the night, the wild animals from the jungle would kill him. So there is no, he has no scope to stay there for night. Moreover, the another way, the river was teeming with crocodiles and snakes. So he definitely, he tried to cross the river by himself, meaning by swimming into the river. He could not because of crocodiles and snakes. He would definitely die. So Muktanan Swami had no chance to cross the river without a boat. Suppose think in our mind, there is no one. We were alone in the jungle. We had passed the jungle without any difficulties. Even though we have fear in our mind, but still without encountering any kind of wild animals. We have successfully passed the jungle, but now we have a river in front of us. We cannot cross the river without boat because of crocodiles and other insects. So what to do? We cannot stay there for a long time because it was evening and definitely any wild animal would come to drink water and if any wild animal found this human definitely kill so what to do but Muktanan Swami was moreover Muktanan Swami was thirsty as well he had passed the whole jungle by walking so he became very thirsty but as the water was not pure, so he could not drink water even. In short, 
Swami was in a tough situation. If he stay there, wild animal would kill him. If he try to enter the deep waters, he could drown or killed by the crocodiles. Swami was not saddened. Even if the odds were stacked against him, he instead became joyful. That is why Nishkuran and Swami had read in the Bhakta Jintamni. Dekhi samaj sankat tano muktananda ne moda che ghano Meaning, Mukta, when Muktanan Swami encountered these worries or difficulties on his way, then, without becoming fearful, he became fearless not only that, but he became joyful. Why? Because he had formed faith in the form of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And that's why he remained joyful in this tough situation. So he thought that what was thinking in Muktanam Swami's mind at the time? Muktanam Swami thought that without the desire of my Maharaj, nothing will happen. So I am facing these circumstances due to his wishes. So understanding this Maharaj's doership in this way, Swami remained joyful. So this is what Muktanam Swami's understanding. We should imbibe this understanding from Muktanam Swami's life. If we imbibe this understanding of Muktanan Swami, we will also remain joyful in this satsang. We do not have to face these kind of difficulties, what Muktanan Swami had to face. We do not have to walk barefoot into the jungle. We don't have to cross such kind of deep rivers. We have to see in very peaceful atmosphere, we have to worship Bhagwan. And just we have some kind of small difficulties. We even Muktanan Swami and Darsantos they could not understand our difficulties as the difficulty. So we have to remain joyful by understanding. Like my Adi Guru Muktanan Swami has this kind of understanding. So I have to imbibe these virtues in my life. So if we imbibe these virtues of Muktanan Swami to understand Maharaj's doership in all kind of situation. Then and then, Bhagwan would come to us to protect us from each and every situation. Meaning, Bhagwan would remain with us in each and every situation. Let's see how Maharaj protected Muktanan Swami. So, when Muktanan Swami was thinking in this way, like Maharaj is the all-doer and without his desire, without his wishes, these circumstances would never happen. So what will be happen in the future? What will happen to me? Everything because of Maharaj's desire. If he wish the wild animal would kill me, then I am happy. Because I want to follow his Agnya. I want to merge into his wishes. But all of a sudden, Maharaj appeared there in the form of a Brahmin with his boat in the water. That Brahmin asked Swami, Sadhuram, do you want to cross this river? Please come with me. Please sit in this boat. Then Muktanam Swami followed his instruction and when the boat reached the, the bank, the Brahmin told Swami, please proceed onwards. You walk if you walk some uh, some miles and you will find the village so that you can stay there safely. So Muktanan Swami came out of the boat and he proceeded towards the way. But after taking some few steps, when he looked back but saw no one, Maharaj disappeared. Maharaj had only purpose to cross the river and Muktanan Swami had crossed the river through this boat so Maharaj disappeared after protecting Muktanan Swami. After fetching Muktanan Swami from these difficulties, Maharaj disappeared. So Muktanan Swami didn't, didn't find anyone there. He threw his gaze here and there but could not spot 
him. Then Swami understood that the Brahmin was no, uh, no one other than Maharaj. So in this way Maharaj had protected Muktanand Swami from this diffic extreme difficulty. So we are Muktanandi as well. So we have to imbibe these virtues of Muktanand Swami. And by imbibing these virtues, Mukta, virtue of Muktanand Swami, we should remain joyful in our life. Not only in our smooth life, but whenever we have any difficulties or worries or tough situation happen to us, we should remain joyful by understanding Maharaj is the all-doer. Everything happened only because of his desire, his wishes. So whether the difficulties come to our life or whether the happiness come to our life, does everything only because of our Maharaj wishes. So understanding this, we have to remain joyful because he is the protector of us. He definitely protect us from all kind of difficulties. We should always think this Muktanan Swami's understanding and if we imbibe these virtues of Muktanan Swami, then we will definitely enjoy our life. Even the dif difficulties and problems and worries, whatever come to our life, we will enjoy those moments as well. Just as we are enjoying the moment of happiness, in the same way, we will enjoy those moments as well. So let me pray to Muktanan Swami, please. Hey Muktanan Swami, you are our Adi Guru. We always remember you along with Maharaj. So please, show your blessing upon this useless soul so that we can also get your virtues. You are the summit of this, you are the epitome of saintliness. But if we can imbibe only one virtue of you, from your life, then we'll also remain joyful like that of you. By praying this to Muktanan Swami's lotus feet, my humble Jai Swami Narayan. Sri Ganeshyam Maharajani Jai Sri Patim Sri Dharam Sarvade Vishwaram Bhakti Dhar Matmajam Vasudevam Hari Madhavam Keshavam Kamadam Karanam Swaminarayanam Nilakandham Bhaji Sri Ganeshyam Maharajani Jai